Good evening. Uh, welcome to Karl Marx Does the Washing Up, where we ponder like ludicrous metaphysical nonsense in the time it takes to make uh, five Tesco's basic microwave meals. Perfect. Which um, is around 21 minutes? Yeah, g- give, give or take 21. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So today we're going to st- uh, start with the concept of holograms. So what do you think about holograms? Do you think that we date holograms instead of real people? Yeah, so basically me and Shai have this idea that, uh, um, yeah, we date holograms and that, <laughs> <laughs> that we've never really actually ever dated a real person because we're only ever seeing like images of what they are or what we consider them to be in like a sort of like overly romantic, uh, you know, ridiculous yeah. minds. And that's exactly the case because by the time we even get to the date with them, we've already imagined, you know, 25 different scenarios in which we've, you know, proposed and had fantastic sex. In like uh, with this hologram, yeah, 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 and obviously we're always like Humphrey Bogart rather yeah, exactly. than like <laughs> some sort of immature version of Groucho Marx. Yes, exactly. We're which always, is much more yeah. closer to the truth. And obviously everything always goes our way, and uh, conversation flows. But uh, does that mean that we can only date holograms, or that we just haven't found the right person? No, I think it just means we're mentally unstable. <laughs> 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 I, I don't know, maybe there's this idea that possibly if we find the right person, it will silence our instability. But I think that's also a romantic notion created by our own like, holographic kind of idea of um, romance. And the, what the, the main problem I have with the holograms as well the, uh, is the over-romantic, the way that I over-romanticise the past to uh, ex-girlfriends. Yeah, They weren't good, but then the holograms were good. Oh, yeah, because you only remember the, like, beauty about it. But I, I don't think I'm actually... So you can return to it. So it's like creating so, sort of situations where, in the future, you can still visit the past and go on holiday there and still, like, you know, just, like, in rebel, rebel in it and be, like, I don't know. No, I, Just w- enjoy that sort of sumptuousness. But am it's I, also an optimum. Am I remembering what really happened or am I just remembering my experiences with the hologram? Well, I think all memory is kind of fictionalized because you're always building, you're always injecting like the present experience, like the present scenario that you're in and all the things that are built from that time between this time and then you're injecting it into that. And so your mentalities and your perspectives on life have changed and so that all feeds in, even like your belief systems have changed. So like uh, if you're a Christian then now and you used to be a Muslim, <laughs> then you like look at, back at this thing and be like, how Christian she was to do so. Yeah? No, I agree. I agree with that sentiment. But uh, so now that we know what our problem is, and we know that our problem well, what's is that, that? We're, what's our problem? That we're dating holograms. No. <laughs> <laughs> so our problem is that we're mentally unstable. But if we can't do anything about that, can we do anything about uh, stopping ourselves from dating holograms? We, uh, we can't do anything about our mental instability. Aren't they the same thing? <laughs> no, You're, it's not cause and effect. Uh, if we see them as two completely independent things, could we train ourselves to date actual people and not holograms? Yeah, but we have to like uh, train our minds first to not create holograms. No, but I, I, no, but why don't we just create realistic holograms? Because, <laughs> right? <laughs> A realistic hologram. Yeah, but they're still holograms of things. Like just yeah. because, like. Yeah, but she, I can't. Just I mean, because the hologram in your in your mind is fat, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make it like. More real, it just makes your delusion less attractive. No, but I'm not talking about the physical hologram, I'm talking about the mental capacity of the hologram. Okay, fine, so, so she why has don't a fat we... personality. Yeah, but why don't we picture ourselves in realistic scenarios rather than scenarios where we are, you know, the ultimate romantic individual? Yeah, that makes sense. But I think uh, probably the reason why we don't do it is just because it sounds boring to us. Like, we want this, like, uh, if we're going to start imagining things in our heads which are not based in reality, then we might as, w- might as well imagine the most, like, majestic um, version possible, right? But why don't we imagine the least majestic version possible and make the most majestic version? And then the, and then the truth, like, really like yeah. ex, uh, extends yeah. our um, yeah. expectations. Yeah. And so then we're like, oh my God, she's amazing. And we'll actually fall in love with yeah, the but, person. But the thing is, if we create such like um, inferior holograms, we'll never leave our bed. <laughs> we'll never <laughs> go out with them. Why would we go out with them? I think the... But if we go out with them... The options are mostly like... The food. And then hopefully they'll pay. Yeah, because if it's not clear, we're huge feminists. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Okay, so the basis to solving uh, sanity is to create fictionalized, well, fairly almost unpleasant fictionalized <laughs> holograms of people we wish to spend time with in our heads and then go visit them because we consider, despite all their flaws, they're still willing to pay for our dinner. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think that's a very effective summary. Yeah. But and so we go for the food and then we leave thinking these girls these this girl are amazing. amazing. She's just exactly. like... Mind blowing because she's like much better than that. This is, this is the like flaw. That, this is our flaw, right? We uh, we go in with exceedingly high expectations, so yeah. we need to dampen those expectations and dampen them to such a point that they can't not be exceeded. Yeah, but don't you find that happens anyway? That like your imagination is kind of inferior to like the the truth of people. But we were just saying the complete opposite. We were just saying the reason why we're single is because. These holograms that we have in our mind, no women can ever relate to. Yeah, no women can ever become. So I think it's not, even, it's not even that. It's not that the holograms are better than the people. It's just that we have attachments. We've created an attachment to a hologram. And when that doesn't um, satisfy... Yeah, that's very you, true. Because you spend the entire like, evening with the hologram, right? Whereas we maybe only spend one or two hours with the actual real person. Yeah. So you think you've created a better attachment with the hologram than you have with the person. Yeah, but also you're just so committed to that being it. It's like, you're just like, oh my God, I really want spaghetti bolognese. And you're just like, I want bolognese. And so you go out to get the spaghetti bolognese and then they serve you this beautifully cooked fish. And but it's like, not spaghetti bolognese. I want fucking fish, man. I want spaghetti <laughs> bolognese. But the fish was better than the dish you were going to have anyway. It's just that you were so attached to the bolognese. It's not, it's not to do with like quality. It's just to do with like expectations and attachment and insanity. <laughs> <laughs> really? no, no, so, I, yeah, you know, you're right. I think everything does come back to the fact that we are mentally insane. But how yeah. can we use that in our favour? Uh, make art, I guess. Make art? Make oh. this podcast? Make this... Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, uh, we are, like, at least trying <laughs> insanely to entertain you. Uh, <laughs> this is only based on, like, a kind of, you know, perceived insanity. Yeah, that's very true. And maybe the but then if we're insane, and then we're perceiving our insanity to be insanity, then maybe it's actually sanity. No, because no. we're no. too insane to actually perceive it. I think just because Correct. you have insight into your mental illness doesn't mean that you're not mentally insane. <laughs> no. No, 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 I don't think that makes sense. That's just like one lovely, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. linguistic... I feel like that's what Hollywood teaches you, but uh, that's definitely not the case. Hollywood teaches you insanity is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it? Yeah. Well, maybe it teaches you that if you know that you're insane, you're actually sane. But that's definitely not the case in your life. Really? I didn't think... I thought Hollywood was more teaching you, like, if you're insane, go to this hospital, take this medication. <laughs> um, Whereas um, we're making a podcast to take with our insanity. Yeah, yeah. How's it, how's it working? Uh, <laughs> so far, so far, so good, I think. Yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like I'm, like, creeping towards, like, normality. Do you think so? No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. Um, but I do think that we are. We will leave this uh, podcast session with maybe with maybe less affinity for hologram. Yeah, I was going to say enlightenment. Were you going to say enlightenment? Well, isn't that uh, isn't it just one and the same the thing? Is it the same thing? <laughs> well, it depends how long it lasts. But will enlightenment last? Oh yeah, I think it's like it only lasts twenty one minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the same as the uh, five Tesco basic uh, ready meals. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is the first one is always already cold by the time the fifth one is heated. And so yes. it's just you get into this cycle of just reheating and reheating. So really, in actual fact, apologies for the lie, um, <laughs> we, uh, a Tesco's basic meal actually takes eternity to heat up. Five Tesco's basic meal takes eternity to heat up because once the fifth is cooked... The first is cold, and then you've got to heat, reheat the first, and, and you're just trapped in this loop of, like, um, yeah, eternal banality. Well, for me... So the only option is to eat a hologram of the meal rather than <laughs> the actual meal itself. Well, uh, from your earlier point, uh, you did mention a lot of spaghetti bolognese, and now I'm, I really want spaghetti bolognese. Yeah. Do you, is one of the ready meals spaghetti bolognese, or is it just all beautiful fish? Um, or is it five of the I same meal? I think it's... Yeah, uh... Just rice. <laughs> just egg fried rice. Just, really, just, just egg fried rice. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The f- we can get something to put on top of that. Something we can get a hologram. We can, yeah, we'll just eat Yeah, hologram. yeah, yeah. Just hologram. Like, what is a hologram of rice? You've already made the rice into egg fried rice. You're already <laughs> eating holograms. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> Uh, 
So, so moving away from the dating scenario, so if we are, if we, do you think that we've ever experienced truth? If we make a hologram for everything and every experience that we've been through? Have we ever obtained truth? Have we ever experienced it? Have we always experienced what we thought, what, what the hologram, have we just always experienced the hologram? Well, I guess, I don't know, I guess we do all live in like our own subjective realities, like yeah, but we think filtering everything through our own mind. Where we think we're the most important people. Yeah, I mean, there's always a sort of, like, kind of God complex to some degree, or like, not even a God complex, but some, you know, self-centric idea of this world, and everything is considered through, uh, through our own. Through a lens, right? Through yeah. a lens. But I think there is a possibility to actually, you know, move beyond that and sort of transcend these ideas, um, or transcend, you know, yourself to some degree. I think mostly through meditation and stuff like this. Do you think um, we've achieved that? We, me and you, definitely, definitely not. not. <laughs> definitely <laughs> not. But I think there might be some people out there um, who possibly have. I feel like I've achieved it in like momentary states at times in my life where I've kind of just, just like vanished into the ether and just become like complete oneness with, um, with the universe and then there's no like pers- personal single pointedness but as soon as I have any like consciousness or acknowledgement of like that sort of transcendent experience then it becomes single pointedness again and then I'm like oh that was quite a nice transcendent experience and, and then you like, can't get back to it wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then would you refer to that transcendent uh, experience as enlightenment or, or would, you, would no. it be impossible to define no it's just like it's actually maybe just a moment I don't know I, I like to assume it's closer to truth than my everyday reality, which is so, so absurd because all the data that I have um, of my life would suggest the other stuff to be truth rather than this. But there's like these small moments of poignancy in life and we consider this to be truth. And I think that's, again, like possibly to do with our own like romantic delusions that we see something so incandescent and so like beautiful that we just yeah. have this optimism that we want to ascribe truth to it because the, gr- the true reality is the great reality. But how do I know that you've actually experienced that and you haven't just read about it and then parted it into your mind? Or that you just uh, dreamt that you'd uh, experienced this moment? Or is the fact that it's happened more than once truth? No, I, I mean, delusions can occur multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the like, regularity of it has much to do with it. Um, Fine, so do you think that you can get back to that state? So I think the biggest problem with this is that once you've tasted it, you crave it, and the craving for it is what prevents it. Do you think if you had no craving for it, you would be able to find it? In the, uh, in the, in yeah, the, yeah. Well, I think that it inhibits it, but I do think there are certain like, um, things that you can do or uh, things to structure your life in order to cultivate the spaces in which these things happen, right? Which, for example, is meditation or like creating certain, I don't know. But living, so living in the, you know, the hustle and bustle of uh, central London, do you think that we can achieve those meditation states within the lives that we lead? Yeah, I think it's just harder. It takes maybe more commitment. And we're just so fickle and so, like, stimulized. Yeah, and we, by we, we mean you know, the two of us. We're not making a... Are we, on? Are, are, we, are we making a comment on people in London? <laughs> well, I think generally... I think I'd like, be very... Uh, no. Very yeah. arrogant. No, well, we're not that arrogant, are we? No, no we, we, we are. Pretty, <laughs> we're pretty arrogant. But, no, I think just generally living... Well, yeah, I guess that's the... Well, from our own self-centric reality, making objective assumptions about things, I feel yeah. living in London... There's just a lot of stimulus. Like, it's not really about us or them. It's just there's so much stimulus. And I think generally it's quite hard to... Um, I don't know. It's take, quite in that, take in that stimulus and like... And then also escape it, right? Yeah. Because I think we don't, we don't pay enough attention to anything to take it to its depths, to actually explore its truth yeah, or its, true. like, its actual quality of being. Uh, so it's always like, running in the background, do you think? Yeah. It's always just in the background. And, and it's also, yeah. we only take, take um, notice of like the outer layer, the aestheticism of it and the kind of um, the sexiest part. If that's the case, why are we doing a 21 minute podcast? If people oh, to create, to create more stimuli. <laughs> more, more stimulus. Well, I think. But if it's over 21 minutes, will people listen?